All right, well, fuck all of that. I just want to ask Destiny. You were having this debate with Abba, and you was having this debate with uh, Gideon. You guys were talking about voting. And I just want to, you know, from my perspective, like in the community, just growing up, like uh, the system is broken. And we know the system is broken. And, we, you know, and we know the system is not like behind us, you know what I'm saying, as far as the black community. And, like, and you were like really going hard at them. So. I just really want to know that take on it, like, because why would my community be so, you know, like, inclined to vote? You know what I'm saying, and just inclined to go out there and take those steps. How is it? How what 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 is this show? What are we on right now? It just says the Destiny interview, which honestly is not a great title. It should be just called like. Des- like what is Destiny, the level of Adam, like seriousness zero. and humor? Like where are we at? We trying to get educated. I trying mean, to, are we doing? Okay, it's, it sounds like a sincere question. I don't know. Take oh, it no, however it's, you it want. It did sound sincere, but if this is like a humor podcast, no, no, before, and you bring me on, and okay, Sledge Lords before <laughs> where we were eating candy was yeah, like gotcha. the funny. Okay. Let's not do serious. This we can do whatever the fuck we want here. Gotcha. We could even take oh. phone calls. Okay. <laughs> oh shit! Well, uh, not me. <laughs> um, there's a reason why people fought so hard to get the right to vote. Um, the, pr- the problem with the question is that ha- the intersection of like how all of our institutions work and how what we vote on, like how that comes out into policy is all very complicated and it's a little hard to see. So I, I understand the, exp- I can empathize with the feeling that like, no matter how we vote, nothing is going to change. But I mean, it's that mentality exactly that is why things don't change. Like if you try to look at how cities are comprised and what policies get passed and what politicians pay attention to. Sometimes you look at the composition of a city and you're like, okay, this city has these problems. There are this many people here. Stuff isn't getting fixed. Therefore, it seems like the system is broken because we have the same problems over and over and over and over again, right? Look at LA. Fuck, I lived in this area for like three years. Look at the homeless population, right? Nothing gets done. But then if you stop looking at the people that live there, because that's not important, and you look at the voters, the people that go out and vote, you start to understand a lot more why things are taken care of the way that they are taken care of. So for BLM, it was cops that they talked about a lot. But think about like who's more likely to vote. A young black man that might be in his like mischief years, right? Because, you know, like teens to late 20s is when you're up to no good generally. When I say up to no good, that can be like smug weight, right? Or like a 50, 60, 70 year old, decently wealthy white guy who probably never sees a cop in his life. Right? When you start to look at the composition of who's actually voting, it starts to make sense why only some issues are taken care of and other issues are pushed to the side. And I, I wish that more people would recognize that. Like, If everybody starts voting, the, the ways that politicians are going to act is going to change a lot because now they're not just trying to appease like the older white people that are wealthy that are voting. Now they're trying to appease like the entire city. And, and if you were to like have believed your whole life that when you look at like just the presidential election, which let's be real, that a large percentage of Americans, that's the only election that they ever pay attention to. And if you were to be like, well, Republicans and Democrats, things, things seem like they're basically the same, regardless of who gets uh, elected or whatever. But then in recent memory, if you look at the Trump thing, I mean, you do have an example of somebody who is like a total outsider politically who was able to get elected. Now, probably everybody sitting here is not a big fan of Trump. Actually, you are a fan of Trump. So let's, let's erase that from the record. But, you know, like you have an example right there of how this sort of like fringe candidate that probably nobody establishment wise wanted elected was able to get elected, and that kind of just shows the power of the people, that regardless of how we feel about the MAGA crowd, they were able to get their guy in office just by, like, mobilizing around him. And, I mean, you could kind of look at Trump and say, like, well, Trump didn't really do all that much that really was, you know, all that different from what every other Republican candidate did. But, I mean, I'm sure Destiny could rattle off a whole bunch of shit that Biden has done that has been in favor of you know policies he but do we actually stuff. think the black vote is going to change anything especially with us being like what like two three to five percent of the actual like More than ex- that right you know, i think black existence I think out that here it, the black vote is actually incredibly important i think it's a very important strategic shaping of like the democratic primary process right like you saw coming out of fucking iowa um and i think it's new hampshire right where you've got like bernie sanders and Pete Buttigieg are in this like, you know, neck and neck race and who knows what's going to happen. And, you know, they're the only two candidates anybody's talking about. And then as soon as we roll around to those southern states where you start to see a lot of black voters come out, that really shapes and changes the nature of what the uh, Democratic candidate will ultimately end up being. So, yeah, I mean, I think there are times where, where the black vote is like pretty important. It's been strategically used in the past. Yeah. I, th- I think, though, beyond like the racial dynamics of it all, there's a sense of futility. And this isn't mutually exclusive to... Um, to you know, black people or any specific demographic, but just I would say 
anyone under 45 years old, let's just say, this sense of futility, and it's not limited to either party because there's a, not only is there a feeling of, okay, our vote doesn't matter, but then you got people on both sides of the spectrum, the right and the left, saying, claiming that there's voter fraud, and we don't even know, like... <laughs> Is this all predetermined? And I think that kind of discourages a vast majority of the people that don't vote from even doing it. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of voter discouragement. Um, so there's a couple things that play into it. So, so here's the first part. Um, our system is designed to be slow, right? The idea is, is you don't want one party coming in and having like a cascade of new laws and everything passed. So our, our system is pretty cumbersome by design, by intention. And I think a lot of people are frustrated because it seems like there's not a lot of stuff changing right now in the system. But I think that people will point to the system and they'll say, well, it's not working. But I think it actually is working because the reason why we're not seeing much change coming from like our legislative bodies, right, from Congress and everything, is because the people are historically divided. Like, yeah, Congress sucks and they're not getting anything done, but if you go out and you talk to people, people are also like completely at odds with each other. Like we're more divided now, it feels, than I think we've ever been, at least in my lifetime, um, in terms of like people disagreeing over just fundamental aspects of reality, like you bring up the voter fraud thing. Um, media, media. There's no consensus in media because if if it's uh, media that favors the right, the left is going to say this is not accurate, this is fake, this is fraudulent, and vice versa. So it's really like, thus, like, what do we believe? What do we listen to? Where do we get our information? What's trustworthy? I, I mean, like, the, so here here's the challenge. A lot of the new like information age that we live in is predicated on a super wrong idea. And that idea is that humans are fundamentally like truth-seeking creatures. We're not. We don't really go for truth. Usually we seek things that like make us feel good, that reaffirm what we want to know, um, or that what we feel, um, and, and, and then things that like already kind of comport with our view of reality. That's what people are generally predisposed to, to viewing. And so people will throw the internet at us and go like, oh my God, look, you have access to all the information in the world at your fingertips. You can go and research anything. And it's like, okay, well, I'm gonna go and find 20 things that agree with me and that's all I'm gonna look at. Right. And that's kind of what ends up happening there. So um, there's a lot of like, you kind of have to be aware of all these pitfalls that like the human brain will fall into. Uh, you know, like if we go back to, you know, when we lived in jungles and shit, if there's a bush shaking, you know, and your your two friends run away, and you go and investigate because you're curious, and you get eaten by a fucking tiger. You're not really rewarded much for natural curiosity. You're more rewarded for quickly identifying and creating patterns, stereotyping, and then doing things that keep you safe. Um, once you kind of have that understanding, I think of, of of human nature that we're not fundamentally equipped to discern fact from fiction, and instead we just kind of like like the things that make us feel good. Um, a lot of the internet landscape and the political landscape starts to make more sense, I think. Yo, we just hit 400,000 subscribers right here on the Clips channel. So if you want to help us out, click subscribe, get us to 500k. Yeah.